ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு நியூஸ் கிளிக் ரீசன்ட்லி தமிழ் நாடு போலீஸ் டினைட் பர்மிஷன் ஃபார் தி ஆர் எஸ் எஸ் டு கேரி அவுட் ரூட் மார்ச்சஸ் அட் பிப்டி ஒன் லொகேஷன்ஸ் இன் தமிழ்நாடு ஆன் அக்டோபர் செகண்ட் திஸ் கம்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் த மெட்ராஸ் ஹைகோர்ட் கிராண்டட் தி ஆர் எஸ் எஸ் பர்மிஷன் டு கோ ஹேட் வித் த மார்ச் த போலீஸ் ஹாவ் செட் தட் த லா அண்ட் ஆர்டர் சுச்சுவேஷன் பிரிவேலிங் இன் த வேக் ஆஃப் த பேன் ஆஃப் த பாப்புலர் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஆஃப் இந்தியா வாஸ் நாட் கண்டியூசிவ் டு ஹோல் திஸ் மார்ச்சஸ் வாட் இஸ் திஸ் மீன் Why does the RSS want to hold in marches in so many places? And what is the DMK government trying to say by denying permission to them? To talk about all this, we have with us senior journalist R.K. Radhakrishnan with us. Hello, sir. Thanks a lot for joining us. Sir, could you please uh, tell us, why does uh, the RSS want to hold marches in so many places on Gandhi Jayanti? See, this is uh, part of a larger scheme of things. It is not that uh, this is, uh, cannot be seen as a one-off kind of uh, you know, uh, thing at all. Uh, if you look at how the Sangh Parivar has been trying to uh, come into Tamil Nadu, you will see that the first thing that they did is to bring the Ganesh Chaturthi Pujas into Tamil Nadu and have this huge and long drawn out processions which Tamils are not used to. It is not part of Tamil culture. It, we have not been taking, uh, you know, this huge, uh, you know, processions for Vinayak Sudhurthi at all. Of course, we do take it to the nearby, uh, you know, uh, you know, temple pond or something and put the Vinayak there. That's all. Uh, it has not been this huge structures that we have been doing. Now, uh, over the years, what has happened to that particular, uh, you know, kind of uh, celebration, which really involves migrants and all those people who get their daily wages out of this, is that uh, it becomes uh, a police regulated police controlled and police uh, you know directed kind of celebration that that complete opportunity is gone uh, to uh, you know kind of create a ferment trouble because the narrative has to be hindu khatre mein hai hindu is always in danger so unless you have that narrative unless you unless you set that narrative it is impossible for uh, the sang parivar to grow in any place so that is how the sang parivar grew out of uh, the rath yatra you see uh, uh, the seats going up in lok sabha from 2 in 1984 to 80 or 88 or 89 in 1989 that's that's the uh, you know framework so after that what happened the bjp has been trying to take up what is called uh, uh, hindu issues a girl in a uh, you know christian convent uh, was being mistreated ill treated in tanjore and all of that that became a huge issue and then when they knew that it will not cut any eyes they dropped it then they went to the next girl then they went to a third person i mean this has been happening the bjp has been trying to do this at the same time we uh, see that the Uh, the other part of uh, this say, Vinay Chaturthi processions also have failed. Now they are bringing in a new element into that picture. Of course, there will be the constant pressure with, uh, you know, taking up uh, Hindu Tua issues across Tamil Nadu, uh, claiming that these are all Hindu issues. But at, at another level, they want to show their power. They want to show that uh, in these 50 cities uh, or towns, we are going to march through uh, a particular area where a particular community resides. to uh, tell you that you know these are all places where uh, these guys are, are in a majority and these places you have to be very fearful of them their population is going to overwhelm us so this is part of a pattern this is part of a larger goal to uh, bring this concept of hindu kathre mein hai into tamil nadu and bring hindus together from dalits to the brahmins and to make sure that uh, you know they all vote for the bjp well sir uh, bjp is a political party and it has its own uh, agenda but why does the rss want to uh, make in roads in tamil nadu and grow here exactly that's a very good question now rss claims it's a cultural organization but uh, a, a cultural organization like for instance narada gana sabha is a political i mean it's a cultural organization there is no politics attached to it there we can say that all these organizations in chennai which promote music and arts and all of that might have a caste angle to it that's the that's the biggest criticism against these organizations but at the same time rss also says that it is going to create a hindu rashtra and that hindu rashtra becomes a political objective you claim you are a cultural organization how can a cultural organization have a political objective how do you achieve that political objective so the the lie is that it is a cultural organization the fact is that it wants to create this uh, you know complete hindu rashtra this political aim how to achieve that political aim it has to use whatever powers that it has with it which is the sang parivar's uh, outfits which is the vhp which can be the 
RSS, it can, I mean, it can be the BJP, it can be uh, the AVP, any of these organizations, anything that comes in handy. So the ultimate aim is by the year 2025, the 100th year of existence of RSS in uh, of coming to its existence, it wants to create Hin uh, a Hindutva India, it wants to create a Hindu India. That's the political goal. Okay, but still, can the Tamil Nadu government uh, not give permission? Can they deny permission if they're asking for marches? And uh, what is the DMK trying to do by not giving permission, especially when the High Court itself has yeah. given an order? See, the thing is that in a democracy, uh, I think each uh, pillar of democracy should understand what its powers are and act accordingly. If that does not happen, if suddenly I am the media, so today I decide, okay, from today I want to operate out, out of the secretariat, it is not going to work. It's, it, it's not the right way to go about uh, protecting and preserving and promoting democracy. Why are we a democracy? We are a democracy to achieve the greatest possible good to the greatest number of people in the shortest possible time. That is what uh, Gandhiji wanted to do when uh, India achieved independence. So unless the judiciary realizes, unless the administration realizes, unless the legislative uh, body realizes its extent of powers, you, uh, we had a PH Pandian who claimed, a speaker of uh, the Tamil Nadu Assembly, saying that he had sky high, high powers. Nobody has sky high powers. Every power is defined. Every power has to be exercised with caution. Every power do, should not infringe on the right of another uh, you know institution or body of of uh, of uh, the uh, of democracy what is happening here is that the court has come into a domain of administration and is trying to tell the government puducherry uh, has given permission why can't you give permission puducherry is a uh, place which uh, uh, with, with a few lakh people i mean uh, a law order issue cannot get really out of hand in a place which has only those many people and the geography and topography itself is so small but Tamil Nadu, if you're asking for permission in 50 cities and the police is telling that only now the PFI has been banned and there can be repercussions because of that. And only now, uh, this is the first time that the RSS is going to hold it, uh, which is which is not correct in the sense that October 2 is the birthday of uh, Gandhi Jendi, the day Gandhi was born. And we all know that Naturam Godse himself and uh, Gopal Godse have repeatedly said that they were members of the RSS, though RSS denies it uh, like all its pracharaks uh, do when uh, any criminal activity happens, including the Ayodhya incident, they all keep denying it. But the fact happens to be that you cannot have uh, a, a judiciary impinging on an administrative issue. This is an administrative issue. It has to be handled by the administration. That power resides with uh, the cabinet at, 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 at worst, that is, you know, if you escalate and escalate, finally, it, uh, it has to be with the cabinet. It does not lie with the judiciary. So this is also not the first time that RSS is not uh, given permission for marches in yeah. Tamil Nadu, right? So since till about 2017, both the Jailal led government and Karnanadi led governments have not given them permission. What is the history behind this? Uh, see, uh, in 2017, it was uh, um, O Panisalam who gave permission for an RSS route march in Chennai. And that he did for personal gains. He did not have the interest of the state in mind. He did not have the interest of the ADMK in mind. He didn't have the Dravidian ethos in mind. He was just another guy occupying a chair which he had no business occupying. And unfortunately, Jayalatha trusted him. And that was the reason. He, he was a guy who will sell out to the highest bidder. I mean... That is my version, uh, my impression of uh, this person. Before that, it took, I think, 17 years or so before, there was uh, an instance where RSS was given permission. But ever since uh, Karnanadi and Jelta have come into power, they've realized that, uh, you know, the kind of sectarian violence that can happen because of an RSS route march and the manner in which these route marches are held. So immediately after uh, the problems in Coimbatore, uh, when uh, the pipe bomb uh, issues happened in Coimbatore and they kept saying that Adwani's life was endangered because of this and all of that, that opportunity afforded Karnanadi and, uh, a, a chance to actually ban any, uh, any of these rallies. In fact, Tamil Nadu is an extremely oppressive police state in one way, if you look at it, because none of us can hold any agitations anywhere as we please. The government will give you permission or the police will give you permission. You have to ask for permission even for a hall meeting and only once the uh, permission is accorded, can you ha actually have a hall meeting. But I think uh, in the interests of uh, the state and keeping in view of our own history, starting with Prabhakaran and the shootouts in Chulaimedu and in Tinagar and other places, 
maybe for a period of time it is okay to have this kind of restrictions and these kind of restrictions also mean that uh, you know uh, organizations like the rss cannot appropriate public property and cannot go around uh, you know uh, brandishing swords and guns and all that as they've done in some other places in the country so we've been hearing that rss has been growing in tamil nadu that their shakas have been uh, gone up to 600 in the recent past So, what does it imply for a state like Tamil Nadu? Where are we heading? See, obviously, if you have uh, a lot of money, there will be people uh, coming to you, and it's easy to mislead uh, young people. In fact, when I was in college, uh, I studied in Kerala. I remember that the ABVP chaps came to me and told me that they were an independent organization. They have no connection with any political party party whatsoever. Uh, so, I went back uh, to my folks and I inquired, and my brother told me, "No, ABVP is uh, the student wing of uh, uh, the BJP." so i mean it is like that rss will say that uh, it stands for cultural nationalism and it wants culture preserved and what not and uh, you know the hindus hindu ilu padithikondukkarar hindus are being uh, spoken of in a derogatory manner and you have to stand up and all that so this might cut uh, cut eyes with some people for some uh, uh, amount of time but the lies cannot go on remember this is an organization which went to the it department and said that it is uh, uh, it's a charity and uh, i mean ej nurani has recounted it very well in the book the rss a menace uh, to india and you should see the kind of uh, you know subterfuge that they employed to stay out of paying uh, taxes and to try and uh, hoodwink the it department in one place they say they are a cultural organization in another place they say they are a charity organization but uh, you know when it when it matters in front of i mean they they give completely different information to two different completely different agencies just to uh, avoid coming into the radar and uh, doing uh, things as per the law uh, that is provided in this country so the 600 is not a huge number if you ask me kerala has 7000 uh, shakas Uh, and in kerala we also see orphanages and other places being taken over by the rss and being run by the rss so it's literally snatching them at the cradle, cradle and making sure that uh, they all uh, remain uh, true to the communal agenda of the rss we have still not reached there uh, but uh, the kind of money that the bjp has now and the kind of clout uh, that rss enjoys in this country uh, unless the dravidian parties actually make a huge push against uh, this and start a propaganda war saying that hindu is not in danger the oppressed communities are in danger unless that is point the, this finally is a class divide it has nothing to do with the caste that you belong to it has nothing to do with uh, who you are at any point of time and hindu certainly it's not in, not in danger in india thank you